feeling. All right. Welcome to our third Google Hangout in the series, Electronic Payments, Demystifying the Complex. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Um, we've got a good show for you today. We have a special guest planned. Melanie Dolgachev is going to be joining us, who is our Senior Product Manager for Payments here at Zora. So pretty excited about that. So I don't have to do all the talking. It should be, should be pretty fun. Um, and we've got our usual cast and crew here. I, I won't flip the camera around like I usually do because we're using a, a, a much better camera that's kind of fixed mounted instead of my, my little laptop camera. But, uh, you know, we have Mikey, we have uh, Dexter, uh, and we have Megan. So we will uh, be taking questions via chat. So just let us, uh, let us know in the chat window uh, if you have a question, and then uh, we'll get going. So first of all, just a couple of housekeeping items. Again, it's a family show, so keep it clean. Uh, you know, safe harbor statement. We will be making forward-looking statements. No, I'm just kidding. We're not public yet, so I don't have to do that. That's kind of nice, actually. Um, so anyway, all right, so electronic payments. What do people think about when they think about electronic payments? They think about e-commerce and selling your product online. And certainly the B2C model comes to mind immediately, right? And we certainly have customers that are high volume, high scale B2C where nearly 100% of the business is on a credit card, right? People like Financial Times, News International, you know, our, our tended, like our media, uh, you know, kind of customers, you know, very high volume electronic payments. And um, again, people buying your product online is good. But, but that's not it, right? That's not everything. It's, it's definitely more than that. Um, hence the nice picture uh, of, the, uh, of the iceberg, which I love. I love iceberg pictures. Um, but it's, you know, when you look at a business and when you look at, and, and you know, I've, I've looked at who kind of registered, and most of you guys are young companies. Right? I mean, that's what this thing's all about is, is people that are, um, that are, you know, startups or growing companies. Uh, cash flow is important, right? I mean, you got to fund the business. And what we're after with electronic payments is a way to collect that cash very, very quickly um, and avoid the problem that we used to have in the old days. We, we call it DSO, Day Sales Outstanding. It's your measurement of cash flow. And when you're doing a B2B sale, a lot of times you send out an invoice, net 30, and you hope they pay in 30 days. But sometimes they pay in 40 or 45 or 90 or they don't pay. So obviously one of the best things is you can collect immediately, right, cash flow. Um, another thing is, you know, it's flat out cheaper to fund your business with your customer's money than it is with VC money, right? Um, and depending on what kind of a market you're in, um, and oh, by the way, we are going to have a session in August with Lighter Capital, uh, and uh, these guys are capital as a service. This is going to be a really, really interesting uh, session, kind of a new take on the, on the VC model. So uh, be looking for that invite for, for August, and I don't, I don't know what the date is yet, so uh, we'll have to get that scheduled text here, but it's somewhere in August. I don't know when. But, um, uh, but I think the biggest thing that we see is here at Zora, we like B to any. We call it B to any. Some people call it long tail. You know, some people call it filling the funnel with qualified credit card prospects. But, you know, when you look at companies like Box and Zendesk and CollabNet and some of our really successful customers, what they do really well is they allow somebody to come in and, you know, they might be a free trial, but at some point, somebody can buy two um, licenses on a credit card, for example, at Zendesk. Or you can buy five or ten gigs on a credit card with Box.net. And those, those sales come into Salesforce.com where an upsell team or an enterprise team or an inside team or whatever you want to call them can call that company and say, hey, I see you've been using our product for 30, 60 days. How are you liking it? You know, how much more do you need? How big is your department? And they get that upsell, right? And we certainly have a lot of success stories from our customers 
about that model, and that's that's really for me that's the exciting part, the magic that we call B to any, um, and that's really for a B to B that's trying to make that transition to the long tail. Um, that's a great great model. Um, one of the things we see all the time is we go to a B to B company, and they say, hey, we bill on the first, we bill on the fifteenth, right? They they bill once a month. Um, because billing is kind of a hassle. You don't want to have to do it every day. Your controllers probably got other things to do. Um, the good thing about electronic payments coupled with a system like Zora is you can just bill every day and collect every day. Again, you don't have the lumpy cash flow. You get cash flow right in when people sign up and when they hit their anniversary date. And you don't need to prorate the first month. Right? If they buy in the 15th, it doesn't matter. You take the whole month. right? So that's, that's a really, really important aspect as well for people who are B2B that are thinking about this b to any you know, electronic payments onboarding type of model. Um, and it's more than credit cards. Uh, you know, ACH is becoming a very, very popular payment method for, uh, for B2Bs now. So uh, that's something that, uh, that we certainly uh, uh, can enable. Uh, through our through our many uh, payment partners here at Zora, so uh, and that's another thing that that, that Melanie can certainly talk uh, talk about. So um, without further ado, we have our special guest, Melanie Dolgachev. Welcome, Melanie. How are you? Hello, everyone. I'm doing great. I'm usually hiding behind the scenes, but Travis <laughs> has got me on a Google Google uh, Hangout, which is great. Yeah, so um, thanks for coming in. So, you know, I think we, uh, you know, we're going to have people asking questions over chat, but, you know, I think the first thing we wanted to talk about is, right, what, what do you need to do, right, whether you're a Zora customer or not, to start accepting electronic payments? You know, mm -hmm. what, what do people need to think about and what does that process look like? Okay. Well, if you're a merchant today and you're not currently selling online, what you need to do is get an internet merchant account. So this is basically a bank account that lets you accept credit card payments. Um, and it's not just like Travis mentioned earlier, it's not just credit card payments, but it can also be ACH, different types of direct debit, even PayPal. So these are all electronic payments that, um, that you can accept by having an internet merchant account. And the second thing that you need to um, get set up with is a payment gateway. So a payment gateway is um, basically the, uh, the party that sends the credit card data over to a payment processor. And the payment gateway offers different functionality as well. They, um, they not only validate the credit card data when it's entered, um, but they also provide a merchant account where you can log in and manage your um, and look at all your payments, create refunds, and and submit payments. So wait a second, do I need to get two things? I mean, this is what people get confused about. There's gateways, and there's payment processors, and there's payment partners, and ISOs, and all this junk, right? Yeah. I mean, I know we have a bunch of really really good partners, right? So we've got you know Lytle and mm -hmm. MES and you know CyberSource and Authorize.net. But which of these guys are gateways and which of them are payment processors? Yeah, right? I mean, there's a, it's very complex behind the scenes, but um, basically everybody needs to get set up with an internet merchant account. And you can get set up with an internet merchant account provider that also acts as a gateway, that also acts as a, a processor. And so we call those full service providers. Yep. And or you can go through many different parties. So you can get an internet merchant account with one party, and then they can connect you with the third party gateway or connect you to a third party processor. So you right. can go with one um, provider that does everything, or you can you know branch out and and choose and pick amongst right. the different providers. Yep. So the gateway really accepts the credit card information, validates it, sends it to the processor, and the processor. Uh, then talks to all the different credit card networks like Visa, Mastercard, um, sends it off for you know to see whether or not this um, this payment can be approved mm -hmm. and accepted. Yeah. So um, many many different parties involved in payment processing, which makes it complex. Right. Um, but the net net is if you start accepting electronic payments, you make it a lot easier for your customers to subscribe and to sign up for your products. Yes. I know that when I'm online, I mean, the first thing, you know, I'm sort of an impulse buyer, right? I see something and I want to pay right away. And the, the easiest way to pay is through electronic yeah. payments. Yeah. So if I have a bank, so I know a lot of our customers bank at um, Silicon Valley Bank, for example, 
right? So I can either go to Silicon Valley Bank and I can say, hey, which gateways do would would I sign up for to mm -hmm. be able to get the money, you know, uh, put directly into my bank account? And they'll make a recommendation, right? And 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 most of the time, they're going to have parties that are pre-connected with Zora out of our twelve payment partners. Like they'll have a, a Merchant D Solutions mm -hmm. or or somebody like that. Yep. But if I don't know what I need, um, you know, they can call us, right? And and we can get you involved, and we can say, all right, what currencies do you want to collect in? Absolutely. Where are you based? Right, um, you know, where is your bank? Who do you bank with? Mm -hmm. And we have sort of a matrix of, of that can help people navigate this water. Is that is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, we have a lot of expertise here at Zora. We can definitely help, and we have helped a lot of our customers choose um, the right gateway and processor. And we're agnostic. We provide all the information you need to select the right vendor, but we don't. Um, we don't suggest a vendor to you. So what? So typically, uh, a merchant will come to us and say, you know, I'm based in the U.S. Um, I want to start uh, accepting electronic payments. Which gateways should I work with? And we'll ask them, like Travis says, um, you know, what what payment methods do you need to support? What functionality, as far as fraud, um, do you want to have? And then we look at our list of um, providers and partners, and we tell you exactly, you know. What um, what functionality and and what what differences are amongst these providers, and we encourage you to contact them for yeah. more information. And they will talk to you, answer any questions you have, um, and also um, and also be able to guide you in what their value add is. Why are they different? Right. So then I go through a process that I think is I call I've heard it called underwriting. Underwriting. Right. Yep. Sounds like uh, it, it, it sounds a little dangerous, right? But uh, <laughs> underwriting is like you know, somebody has to take the risk, right. right? So I think that's where, you know, when you look at what those fees go to, mm -hmm. right, it's part of it is really, uh, you know, they're taking the risk. So they want, they're going to ask you, like, how long have you been in business mm -hmm. and other questions like that to be able to assess the risk before they turn you on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's great. Yeah, um, so underwriting is like if you've ever gone through the process of applying for a house loan or a car loan, they look at your... Um, your credit history, look at the type of business that you run. Some businesses, based on your industry, are a little more risky. Um, and so they evaluate all of that, the, mm -hmm. the merchant um, services provider, before they underwrite and approve you as a merchant. Because as Travis said, they're taking on the risk. So, and what are the risks associated? Yeah. With online payments, there's a lot of risk with um, fraudulent credit cards. So, right. in the event that there's a transaction that is proved to be fraudulent, somebody has to return the money. Right. And so the person that returns it or the party that returns it is the merchant bank and then eventually you know they take it out of the merchant's account. But right. what yep. if a merchant goes, you know, um, up. God forbid, but if, if they go belly up and they have no money, then the right. merchant bank is liable. So there's yep. a lot of risk involved. So that's why there's some complexity here. There's right? a lot of complexity. There is some complexity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting that you know, there's a lot of complexity, but within Zora, you would never know how complex it is. Yeah. we make it so simple. That's why I put the iceberg slide up there, I think, <laughs> right? It is really an iceberg, right? <laughs> um, so what is PCI, right? Everybody says, hey, what is PCI? What is PCI level one, mm -hmm. two, three? What, what, give, us, give us the take on PCI. So PCI stands for Payment Card Industry. Yeah. So it's a set of security standards and regulations um, to ensure that credit card data is securely stored, ex securely uh, accepted, stored, managed, handled, and transmitted. So we here at Zora take PCI compliance very seriously. We're fully PCI certified, and you know to be PCI certified um, is a really long process, and it can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So we take that on for our customers. So. Any data that they submit, um, any card data that goes through our system, is stored in a vault, and it's fully secure. Yeah. And so we we worry about that, so our customers don't have to. Right. So we're PCI level one, right? Mm -hmm. And that means that we can hold the card safely, and we've got you know, you know, encryption at rest, and all that kind of fun stuff. And we pay zillions of dollars to make sure that we're PCI level one every year. Okay. So quite often we get this question. Merchant of record, right? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of times we'll get customers that will come to us from a you know another system like a Stripe or something like that, where they're not the merchant of record, right? Mm -hmm. 
where the customer gets the credit card statement it will say somebody else's name on there not their name right so is that the easiest way to think about merchant of record is whose name appears on that consumer's credit card statement or I actually don't really get asked that question a lot yeah. um, when I think of merchant of record when I when I've been asked about it it's more of who has who stores my information so I've got customers signing up I've got their credit card data I've got their you know the billing account information and their subscription data right who has that can I access it? If I need to export it, is it mine? And absolutely, that data belongs to our customers. Right. And it's all accessible within Zora. So every payment transaction that's made through Zora, our customers have the um, ability to go in and access payment logs, access reporting. That's all your data. Okay. Yep. So I think that's a really good point, right? People can absolutely get the data out. We get that question a lot in sales mm -hmm. is, hey, what if I don't like Zora? you know you guys seem really nice but what happens if right you know uh, and and we absolutely every piece of data comes out of Zora um, and it, but but we can't just burn the credit card data onto a USB stick and you know throw it over your send it to FedEx <laughs> right that's that's not PCI compliant right exactly. so we have a very well established process with other Two one providers that you know, if you go to somebody else, we will hand the data to them. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want our customers to stay with us forever, but we know that sometimes things happen, and you'll need access to your data. And there are some credit cards, some vendors that will hold the data hostage, so you can't get your credit card data, you can't get all your customer information. But we will be able to work with you to get that information if you need to through a fully PCI compliant process. That's great. We will never hold your data hostage. <laughs> right? You heard it. <laughs> so, um, great. We got questions, Megan? Yeah. Okay. The question, question one, we use authorized.net. Can we use Z? Absolutely. We can absolutely use authorized.net. Um, I would say in, in my market space, uh, a lot of customers start with authorized.net because it's a very full featured gateway and it connects to a lot of the different processors uh, and it's just a it, it's a great way to go um, so uh, so that's that question now you know there's a lot of people that say hey great you know electronic payments fantastic what are the downsides right there's two main ones right that I can think of right failed payments and chargebacks. We talked a little bit about chargebacks. Um, and maybe we should talk about chargebacks. So if, if I, the Zora customer, am selling a service online and somebody says, you know what, I don't want this service anymore, mm -hmm. right? I want them to call me, right? right. I want them Absolutely. to call me and say, hey, you know, I had a bad time, or I, you know, then I can deal with it or I can give them a free month. Right. But a lot of times, customers won't do that and they just call their bank right mm -hmm. so what what happens is that is that a chargeback yeah that that's a chargeback so a chargeback um, very simply is like Travis said I get my credit card statement and I see a charge in there and either it could happen because I don't recognize that charge so I, I see oh you know this is a hundred dollars I don't know um, who that's from or I don't know what the vendor's name is because the soft descriptor doesn't really adequately describe who the vendor is so I call my credit card company and I say you know what I don't know what this is take it off my statement and so that's a chargeback the other yeah. chargeback happens when somebody's dissatisfied with the service or with the product and so then they just instead of um, you know going through a, a resolution process with the the, the, uh, the vendor they go and just ask their credit card company to do a chargeback. So it can happen for, for different reasons. Um, within Zora, you know, we have a lot of ways um, for you to communicate with your customers because I think that's one of the biggest ways to prevent chargebacks. You want to make it easy for them to contact you. Right. Um, so on your invoices, have a way for them to call you and reach you. Um, we have customer notifications you can send out um, to let customers know and give them more information on their payments, on their services. So com customer communication is really key to preventing chargebacks because chargebacks will cost merchants a lot of money. Yep. It's not just the money you lose from, from the payment that you lost, but also a chargeback penalty fee. 
Yeah, yeah, and, I, and we've heard if chargebacks get get above like one percent, that's sort of a threshold that yeah. ding, 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 bells go off at your bank and they start they yeah. start asking you questions. The worst case scenario is if you have such a high chargeback um, rate, like you said, one percent, two percent, you're at risk of losing your merchant account, which yeah. means you can't accept. And then you have payments. to go to the high risk, bad part of the neighborhood. <laughs> Right, we won't even talk about those businesses. We don't deal <laughs> with those businesses here. But anyway, um, so let's talk about failed payments, right? Um, so you are the queen of prevention of failed payments here mm -hmm. at Zora. So you've, you know, you've you've put together the whole hit list of things to do to prevent failed payments, right? Mm -hmm. So so we've got a couple like account updater. What is the account updater? Um, the account updater is a service that we connect through uh, a couple of gateways. We connect through the Lytle automatic account updater as well as the CyberSource account updater. And the account updater service lets our customers be able to retrieve updated credit card information without ever having to contact the card holder. And that is really important for recurring businesses because um, on an ongoing basis, actually I think Every year, at least 30% of credit cards will incur a change. And if that change is not reflected on their billing account, on their payment method, then the payments will fail. Payments are going to fail. Yeah. So we're all about preventing payments before they fail. Right, right. Um, what about notifications? We handle that, right? Absolutely. We've got a full customer notifications framework with a, a variety of different notifications, and a lot of them are around payments. So you can notify your customers right on... Um, well, proactively, you can notify customers when their credit card's about to expire. Yep. Um, then point them to a hosted payments page to let them update their credit card. Um, you can also notify customers immediately when a payment fails. Say, oh, you know, here's a payment that failed, and here's the error message that we received. Please go to our online payments page and update your credit card. And so this is all about quickly addressing payment exceptions so that you can collect cash faster. Right. Um, and Z payments page, this is basically the ability to just send somebody to a page. Again, it's a secure page. Type in your credit card number, boom, and update it, right? Absolutely. So uh, now I, I stole this from, from one internal deck here, and it's, it's pretty small. You guys won't be able to see it, but this is what happens when you get to scale. So this particular customer is over $100 million in revenue, and, you know, What's interesting about this is the number of failures, and uh, we took off the amounts because it totaled above $15 million, right? I mean, this was a lot of revenue that they were losing, and they didn't have, a, uh, they didn't have processes in place to go, um, to go sort of, you know, uh, you, you know, retry these credit cards right. and things like that? Yeah, they didn't have a streamlined process in place to retry the credit cards, but also they were managing their own payment integration. And, um, you know, at Zora, we manage 14 different payment integrations, and it's, it's not, it's a challenging feat because you have to make sure that any changes that happen with the gateway or if you're connecting directly to a processor, that those are reflected in your integration. Right. So sometimes we see general declines that happen at such a high rate, and it's not always because the credit card's invalid. Sometimes it's just an integration error that causes right. failed payments. So that's, that's interesting because we do get companies that try to integrate directly to a payments API. Right. Every credit card gateway has an API. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of customers will, hey, just, hey, I'm going to start to do electronic payments. Let's just bust out the API manual for authorized.net, right. get after it. But what they find is it tends to be very, very complex. So we've actually integrated with these guys deeply, and we manage those integrations on both ends of the wire to prevent this kind of stuff. Yeah. Plus, we also have the retry logic and things like that. Yep, we have yeah. built in a lot of retry. Um, Payments, payment operations functionality out of the box in Zora. So you can manage payment retry, set it up to say, you know, I want to retry a credit card um, up to three times uh, before I, I reach out to the customer to get new credit card information. Um, but, you know, not only do I want to try up to three times, I want to make sure that that retry doesn't happen um, 
only happens at an interval of every 24 hours or every uh, 48 hours because I want to give the credit card holder a change, uh, a time to make a change on the credit card account, or maybe I need to, you know, give some time in between because for the, for their payment to hit if they're over their limit. <laughs> exactly, because sometimes people get paid, you know, people get paid on the first and the fifteenth. So sometimes it's yeah. just best to retry after those dates. So right. you want to start. Um, you know, really, we have a way to, for you to to manage a retry logic, and we're also going to continue to build upon our payment operations logic. We have a, a lot available today, but um, retries are definitely really key. Yeah. So typically, when we talk about B to any, we're seeing businesses, right? So there tends to be less fraud in businesses, but business to consumer, that's where you see, you know, you typically see see fraud, right? So. What, what are some of the things that we do um, to help prevent fraud? Do we work with particular gateways that have those kind of mechanisms built in? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the payment gateways will have um, basic fraud checks. So that's the checking for address verification, checking for um, credit card security codes. So that's the three-digit code in the back of a credit card. If you submit it, um, you know, it's a great way to, to prevent fraud. Right. Yeah. So that means like if, if the billing address is Foster City, mm -hmm. but it looks like the IP address is Lagos, Nigeria, yep. you could just go, right, yes. cancel that transaction. Yep. Okay. So the gateway will have advanced fraud where it can um, check an IP address. Um, it does velocity checks. So you've got your basic um, fraud settings that a lot of our customers use um, that's really easy to set up. It's, it, it's the address verification, it's submitting the security code, and then it's sending um, an authorization amount. So you can send a, a, a $1 authorization over, uh, make sure the credit card's able to process that. And then right. in Zora, we reverse that authorization. So that money's not held on the account. So nice. we put in that best practice of reversing an authorization. Right. So 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 pre-auth a card. Like so that's a, a lot. That's one thing that we deal with a lot is yep. the decision as a uh, as a merchant whether I offer a free trial without a credit card mm -hmm. and just let everybody come in and sign up, or I I take a credit card and I validate it with a ten cent auth or a dollar mm -hmm. auth just to make sure that it's a valid credit card. Yep. Right, yeah. so we allow you to do that. Oh, absolutely. That's yeah, great. we've had that from since the beginning. So that's it's great. functionality that's out of the box. Fantastic. So we already talked about automatic retry logic. We talked a little bit about customer notification, right? We have the ability to send people past due notices, and we also have the, the ability to do um, to do reporting. Um, what what's reconciliation, right? When mm -hmm. I when I, I I've heard people tell me, all right, it takes a day to clear Visa, mm -hmm. but some days it takes two days to clear Amex. So there's that process that we have in Z Finance that allows you to define your accounting period, but then you have your, your credit card receipts from your bank mm -hmm. that, um, you know, that may overlap. So, so what is, is, that, is that reconciliation? Yeah, so reconciliation is the process of just looking at, so you'll get, um, you know, a statement from, uh, you can get reports from CyberSource, and you can get a statement from your merchant bank, um, and you can see that okay, on this day for American Express, I received um, you know ten thousand dollars into my bank account, and then I received um, you know fifteen thousand dollars from Visa, um, and you want to make sure that in Zora, when you pull the list of payments that you've processed, that those numbers match up. So we provide uh, reporting on uh, payments so that you can easily do that. You can any day. You can run in there and just run a report and just see how much did I collect by payment method, how much did I collect for all my credit cards and direct debit. Right. So we give you full visibility into your payments life cycle. That's great. Well, we've got more uh, more questions coming in. So uh, uh, Megan is feverishly writing on the board. How do you connect to Salesforce.com? That's a great question. So I'll take that one. Uh, so we have something we call ZForce that connects Zora directly to Salesforce.com in two ways. One is we bring the billing data into Salesforce as a related list item so that when you go to an account you can see what their, uh, what their subscription is, what their billing history is, copies of their invoices. You can even see if they are a credit card company or a customer. You can see the last four digits of their credit card number and the expiry date. Right. So you could even run uh, reports on in Salesforce you know, for, for expiring credit cards if you want to. And then we also have a piece that allows you as a sales rep to do quoting 
based on the Zora product catalog, right? Um, so the credit card gateway um, connects directly to Zora. It does not connect directly to Salesforce, but like I said, we bring that payments data and the subscription data into Salesforce natively um, for anybody that has login and access to salesforce.com. So hopefully we got that one. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Jerry, is PCI level one the highest level? I think it is. There's a PCI level two compliance as well. Um, most vendors are PCI one compliant. And so um, we are, we're PCI 1 compliant. Yep. So there's also like a PCI level 3 if you have less than 20,000 cards or something like that. Is that? I don't know. It sounds like you know. <laughs> you may know more know. about PCI compliance. I don't know. I, all I know is we're the highest level, right? <laughs> but we have, um, we have two PCI compliant um, uh, managers here that manage the, all the data security. So yeah. we have them on site. Um, and they have auditing backgrounds, and they're the ones that usually go out um, in their previous jobs before they joined Zora. They went out and audited merchants to make sure they were PCI compliant. So we've got two fully staffed um, personnel here who are all focused on PCI. Okay. So if anybody needs to talk to them, I'm sure we can arrange that. All right. <laughs> their security clearance. Um, okay, Raj, what does a merchant have to do to integrate their Buy Now button with Zora? What does Z calculate afterwards on the back end? So uh, this is really sort of a flow question and an integration question, but essentially um, we have a very uh, full-featured API. Um, so if you go to knowledgecenter.zora.com, you'll see our API, which is what developers use to integrate Zora to an existing web store. We also have a web store that um, we have um, that we that's up on GitHub. We've got a couple different versions of it, a Java version, a PHP version. Um, so that you know, if you need an example of that, you know, it's already pre-integrated with our APIs. So you can either use that store or you can see how we did the integration so that you can sort of replicate it on your back end depending on your architecture and your language of choice. We we certainly want to be Switzerland, so we have a bunch of different flavors of that thing. Um, Jerry, how does Z integrate with standard finance and accounting modules, right? Um, and general ledgers, right? So, um, you know, such as Intact, um, which is one of our favorites here at Zora. Uh, so we, um, uh, w there's two methods of integration, right? We have a summary level and we have a detailed level. So, uh, you know, that's always a conversation for you know, what do you need? What are you set up for currently with your general ledger? Um, do you want customer detail in your general ledger or not? If you're a super high volume B2C customer, generally speaking, you don't want, you know, your individual $20 a month customers inside your general ledger. They're just taking up room. Um, so you might go with summary level. But it tends to be, a, you know, a 10 minute conversation. So we can give you the, the pluses and minuses and, and consider your, your personal situation. So that's absolutely a conversation that we'd love to have. Um, so I think we might be out of questions. Uh, oh, I think I had, uh, you know, an example of our, our PCI compliant iframe. So, uh, you know, and again, this is another thing that you can find at, uh, you know, at, at uh, knowledgecenter.zora.com. Uh, again, it's, it's sort of one of the many flavors where if you have an existing website that you want to integrate Zora to and to be able to collect that card without having it ever touch your servers, this is where people typically talk about PCI is it, you know, this iframe is actually served up from, from Zora. Um, even though your, your customer will see your website, they will never see anything about Zora you need to be able to collect that credit card securely and that's what um, you know and that's what uh, what we do uh, do we integrate with QuickBooks absolutely I mean I run the market segment here for you know zero to ten million dollar companies and I would say probably uh, 65 to 70 percent of my customers are are on QuickBooks as a GL so in accounting speak we're sort of an AR sub ledger right um, and Qu QuickBooks would be your general ledger but the short answer is Absolutely yes. So I think that's it for uh, for the questions, and and uh, that may be it for our payments hangout. Well, thanks, Travis, for inviting me. No, thank you, Melanie. We really appreciate it. So again, if you if you guys have any questions, 
um, you know, we will be sending out the agenda for the next few hangouts in, uh, um, you know, on the 25th here uh, in July and then for the rest of August. So, but in the meantime, uh, you know, let us know if you have any questions and uh, keep your business growing. Talk Bye to you everyone. soon.